Hello everybody, I'm Chris Provost, and you're watching Provost Park Pass, and I am at Disneyland Paris. In today's video, I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know if you've ever thought, or even considered, or that little flat thought fleeting across your mind of how to come to Disneyland Paris. Let's do this. Let's make a plan for you to come to Disneyland Paris because it is awesome. Disneyland Paris is kind of like, almost like a mashup, a mix of Magic Kingdom and Disneyland. I think it leans more closer to the Disneyland side than the Magic Kingdom side. It is really fun. And the first time you walk down this main street, it's almost surreal because you're looking at everything. You're like, oh my gosh, this looks so familiar. I mean, this everything looks so familiar, but it's a little bit different. And it's just really cool and fun. <laughs> Let me get to the number one question I've always been asked about coming to Disneyland Paris, and that is the language barrier. The language barrier. How hard is it to navigate and get around here at Disneyland Paris? On a scale from one to 10, 10 being the most difficult with language barrier, like you don't understand anything that's being said to you, and you have a hard time, and one being you're wearing, wearing in America, English, right? I would say Disneyland Paris is on a scale from one to 10 in difficulty, it's a two or a three. It is not difficult, not difficult at all. Oh, that castle, we're gonna walk in the castle and explore it in just a second. Now, the reason it's not difficult is because Disneyland Paris is a home park to so many countries. It's a home park to England, it's a home park to France, it's a home park to Germany, Dutch, it's a home park to Spain, Portugal, and they all speak different languages. But the one language all of them speak and someone in common is English. So when you come to Disneyland Paris, Every show that you go to is going to have French and English because that way, no matter where somebody comes from, whatever country, they can still understand the programming of what's going on. All the instructions are in French and English. The cast members, almost every cast member here speaks enough English to be able to help you navigate. And you'll notice on their nameplates of little pins, so it sounds like the denoting what language they speak. Now, the first thing you want to do is you want to download the Disneyland Paris app before you come here. And since I'm American, the app is in English. No problem at all. It's very simple uh, to navigate. I literally, as far as the language barrier goes, I've had zero problems. I've been here multiple times. I've never had a problem uh, being able to ask a cast member for some directions or help. Always very helpful. That castle is absolutely gorgeous. Let's go and explore it from top to middle to bottom. Now, Disneyland Paris is amazing. There is some, there is a, there's one little tiny con. I'll get to that at the end of the video, talking about that. But as far as the pros and cons, the pros all outweigh the cons. It's such a fun place and it is affordable. The only thing that makes it more expensive to get here is travel. So if you find a good travel deal on airline deals, then you're gonna find this is probably a more affordable vacation than uh, Florida. All right, so let's go in the castle, explore the castle. And once we're done exploring the castle, I'll go through some more tips and tricks about how to come to Disneyland Paris because there's some things that you need to know that make it unique. But first thing I want you to look at this beautiful castle. On the outside right here in this gold turret, what do you see? Some snails climbing up the turret, the escargot, because we're in France. They've done everything they could to make this castle pop. The reason they chose that color pink is because a lot of times the sky is gray behind it. As you can see right now, it is kind of gray. And that pink really pops with the gray when you take a photo. So also they use forced perspective. You'll notice it's a little bit lighter. And as it goes up the turret, the pink gets a little bit darker, making it look even taller than it is. This castle, as you enter in, has a moat. There's really, like there, you got the waterfall right over there. Running water and it goes right over here onto the other side. And as you come right over here, you can look, see the water over here. They do lots of this shoot, lots of projections and things on this castle uh, for the uh, uh, fireworks and nighttime shows. Uh, right there, the Chateau de la Belle de Bois Dorm. I don't know, that's hard. I think that's the, the home of the Sleeping Beauty. This castle is unique because it has three layers. It has up, middle, and also dungeon. And this is the upstairs level. Let's start there. As you can see, we're going to La Belle, and it's a beauty, and a uh, voice dormant and sleeping. Sleeping beauty. Let's go up. As you walk up these amazing stairs, you're gonna see some amazing artwork, stained glass windows, and you just walk right in here. This is the little foyer. You can look over to where people are walking down below. 
you get to walk all the way around in a circle and it tells the story of the Sleeping Beauty. And you can even walk out on the balcony, which I will. So starting right here, you see the Sleeping Beauty. Some cool things to notice is this guard is sleeping and that guard is sleeping. You notice he's a little bit blue and he's a little bit pink because you know, make it blue, make it pink. And if you listen after a while, you can hear them snoring and sleeping. Now this raven here has a trick. It doesn't really pop anymore because uh, people don't use flash as much as they used to. But when this castle first opened, people would take photos of this raven, right? And you notice in its eyes, it's painted a little bit of red. Right there. So when people would take a flash, it would, when they would get their film developed, the eyes would be glowing red. And people were like, what? I'm gonna go outside now, and then I'm gonna come back in to look at the stained glass windows. But this is something so cool, because you can walk outside and enjoy a view of Fantasyland. This beautiful view of Fantasyland. And there's the stained glass windows on this side, and the light comes here and really makes them pop. We'll see them on the other side. I'm doing a little remodel there, and then opening up a new store. such a unique, it just feels cool to come up here and overlook all of Fantasyland. Ah. I have to show a stained glass. This is true stained glass windows that they had especially made here for the castle. Absolutely stunning. The light comes through and just makes it pop. Incredible. Maleficent looks fantastic. Look at that, burning all the spinning wheels. It's exactly what you do as a parent, right? You hurt something that could hurt your child, you get rid of it, you're like, I'm done. I love that. I just think that's, it's what a parent, it's what you do as a mom or dad, protect that child. And there's the spinning wheel, look, there's some lights coming. A little water dribbling down. We are gonna now go down the stairs. And now we're gonna go down to the lower level and we're gonna see the dragon in the dungeon. There's three different ways, there's lots of different ways to go down there. Um, to see that there's, you go right here from the castle, or walk around into the front of the castle, or go around different ways to see the dragon. Um, I think there's three or maybe four entrances. All right, so here's one of the entrance into the dungeon. So let's go down here and check it out. You walk down, it's a little dark. Now, for you, if you have little ones, it could be a little tiny bit scary for them. Because um, this dragon is ferocious looking. There's the dragon. You'll notice it moves, it's breathing, everything about it. And every once in a while, it'll rear up its head and growl. So we'll wait for it to do that. Even its claws move. Never want to disturb a dragon's slumber. Exit that way. There's also an exit that way. There's stairs that go up. Let's just go out this way and we'll kind of turn around and continue talking about Disneyland Paris. But that dragon, wow. And remember when we we're looking up the bridge and across over that bridge? This is the lower level. There's the waterfall. And a pigeon. There he goes. Here we are walking underneath the bridge. This is the bridge here to the other side. 
It's very pretty. I love the grass. I love what they've done. Just love it, guys. It's just gorgeous. All right, let's talk about booking. Uh, where do you want to stay? Maybe a booking a hotel. They have like, there's basically six Disney properties. Uh, you have the Yacht Club and the New York, New York, uh, the Marvel Experience. Those are the high-end ones. Very, they're very nice. Uh, right now, the, the, uh, the New York is so plush. It's one of the nicest hotels. And they have lots of artwork for Marvel there. Really cool. Then the next level down, you've got the Sequoia Lodge. That's currently where Amanda and Miles and I are staying at. Look, guys, we're at the little wishing well here behind me, a little wishing well. Sequoia Lodge is probably my favorite. And I'll say this, if you stay at the Sequoia Lodge, they have this thing here. It's called the Golden Lodge, uh, Lounge. It is extra. If you get the Golden Lounge, they serve you breakfast. That's all included. Then they include tea time. That's also all included. And then in the evening, they have like unlimited drinks for you in the evening. Uh, they have like in the evening if you want to do pastries and like that that costs a little extra, but it gives you this nice lounge to unwind. Um, my friend Rob is the one that introduced me to that the Golden Lounge, and my wife and I are, and Miles are doing it this time. It's extra; you don't have to do that. But whoa, it is! I just they spoil you. The breakfasts are so good; they are absolutely amazing. Then, if you don't want to stay at the Sequoia Lodge, then there's they have the Santa Fe or the Cheyenne. Those are kind of like the value resorts. Really good. I've stayed, at, I've stayed at the Cheyenne uh, in Santa Fe, I think, and it's great. Uh, it's cars themed. They have a good restaurant there, a buffet, and it's very affordable. It's a little bit more of a walk. It's maybe about a 15-minute walk to the park, maybe not quite that long. Uh, they do have a shuttle, but I don't know if you'd ever take it because you could, there's a little pathway. It's really cool that you can walk. There is one last uh, Disney property I've never stayed at. I think it's Davy Crockett. And... Um, it's kind of like a camping. It's pretty far away. It's more than a half hour away, I think, or maybe 20 minutes away. Uh, you do have to take a shuttle. You can't walk it. And it's uh, it's very, very affordable. And uh, it's kind of almost like camping type of thing. Now, when you book your Disneyland hotel, your tickets are going to be included. So if you book for a five nights at like, Sequoia Lodge, uh, when you book on, when you do that, when you book, you're going to get your tickets included, your, your, your tickets. So you don't need to book your that and then your tickets. The easiest way to do this is you're going to call our friends at Getaway Today. You can't use the link down below. You're going to have to call them and call at 1-855-GETAWAY, uh, 1-855-GETAWAY, and tell them Provost Park Pass sent you. If you do that, you're going to get the very best rates. And now I know some of you might be like, well, is it, how expensive is it? How, uh, uh, is it affordable? Here's what you can do. You can call that number. You can tell them, say, hey, I'm just pricing this out. I want to know what the cost is. How much this costs and they will give you quotes they'll give you quotes for all the different hotels everything and then you can kind of decide if you want to do it or not now what people tend to find is it's usually way more affordable than they thought they're like oh my gosh it's not that expensive compared to like going to uh, Florida the problem is airfare right getting over here to, to France that can be expensive so this is what I suggest you do is you can go in and you can actually do uh, like on Google you could go on Google and do like flight trackers from like whatever city you are at, let's say you are in uh, San Antonio, and you can say, I want to track cheap flights from San Antonio to Paris, or Minneapolis to Paris, or New York to Paris, or LA to Paris. And then um, sometimes those flights will drop. And if you are willing to try travel at a dime, I'll say like, you can look and it's like $400 round trip. You're like, what, this is amazing. I'm gonna take it, this, I'm gonna go. <laughs> then what you do is you immediately call that uh, 1855 getaway. You say, hey, these are dates. And they'll, they'll be able to uh, tell you if they can get you tickets and hotel reservations. And then you go and it's very, very affordable. I cannot recommend coming to Disneyland Paris enough. Uh, I, I, one of my favorite parks. I love it. Tokyo Disney, love it. Disneyland Paris, love it. And I mean, I think if you are traveling, if you are maybe a little bit of a nervous traveler, you've never traveled to a foreign country before and you want your first experience, I think Disneyland Paris is probably the easiest to go to. So remember we talked about the language barrier? I think Tokyo Disney is probably like a five out of 10. Hong Kong is maybe like a seven out of 10. Uh, but uh, Florida, two, just kidding, <laughs> Florida one. Uh, but Disneyland Paris is so easy to navigate. So if it's your first time maybe traveling to a foreign country, this one's easy, very easy and very affordable. I'm gonna walk through Adventureland because I like it. Let's walk through Adventureland. I'll continue on to tell you some more cool things 
about Disneyland Paris. All right, so now we need to talk about Genie Plus. For those of you in America, we all know about Genie Plus, right? At Disneyland and also at Magic Kingdom. But here in Disneyland Paris, there is no Genie Plus. I think they have a superior thing. I think it is awesome. I think it's, it's amazing. I wish we had this in America. It is so good. If you want, there are two different options you can do once you download the app. You download the app, you have two options if you don't want to wait in lines. The first is almost every attraction, you can just buy an individual pass. You go on the app, it says like Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, and it's like, it'll give you time. You say, I want to go between this time and this time, and they'll charge you anywhere from like 10 to $15 per person to skip the line. And you just literally will skip the line if that's what you want to do. So you just go on the app, you can buy individual, uh, like these lightning lanes type of thing. Oh, before we get to the second part, I have to show you something really cool here. So here we are. Guys, they don't have like uh, churros, but they have these crepe, check these crepe stations. You get, you get crepe uh, and coffee, and this is a Nutella crepe, and just, they're just, it's awesome, it's awesome. Okay, anyways, this stop right, this shop right behind this Jeep here is called the Curious Giraffe. And what it is, when this Jeep actually crashed because a giraffe kind of walked in front of it, it doesn't do anymore, but it used to have smoke coming out of here and like it would rumble, the engine would rumble, but you know, it kind of crashed. But let's go into that store called the Curious Giraffe because you want to see the Curious Giraffe. Here we go, we're gonna walk right in here. The Curious Giraffe, you walk in the store. And what do you do? You look up and you see the curious draft is peeking in to see what we're doing. Just sitting there eating a little bit of hay or grass, checking on what the humans are doing because it's a draft and it's curious, hence the curious draft. Wild. Now the second option they have here at Disneyland Paris, if you're so inclined, and when I first say this, you might have a little bit of a sticker shock, like sticker shock and be like, oh my gosh. But then if you break it down, you're like, oh, that's not so bad. They have what's called the premier, the ultimate premier access. So do you know at like Universal Studios, you can buy like a, a premier pass that lets you just skip the line of pretty much every attraction. It's like $250 at Universal Studios uh, Orlando, okay? It's very expensive. Well, guess what? They have that here at Disneyland Paris. It's called the premier access pass, the ultimate access pass. It costs, it's, the, the price is fluctuating very depending on how crowded it is, but it's about $150 to $160 per person. Now, when you first hear that, you're like, oh my gosh, that is so expensive. But here's some things I want you to think about. One, they sell only a limited number. So once it's sold out, they won't sell anymore. So you know how Genie Plus, everybody all day long keep getting Genie Plus. Once the number is sold out, they're not gonna sell anymore for the day. So if you buy this pass, you're gonna get guaranteed, you're gonna walk on the attractions. Which attractions does it include? All of them. So all the major attractions at both parks, this park and the um, Walt Disney Studios. Now speaking of Walt Disney Studios, you can park hop back and forth anytime. There's, you don't have to wait, you don't have to wait for like 11 or one or two or whatever time it is, just park hop. And it's like Disney California Adventure, it's very close. And you like literally just walking right back and forth. So when you buy that ultimate pass, it's gonna have all the attractions. Uh, Space Mountain, Hyperspace Mountain, the Phantom Manor, Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, Tower of Terror, Crush's Coaster, um, Peter Pan is also included into it. I think it's 16 or 17 uh, e-ticket attractions. The Indiana Jones is included. These are, they're all included. So when you buy it, then it gives you a little QR code on your phone you don't have to schedule a time. All right, I'll continue on in just a second, but look, you guys can see Carl and Russell down there getting a little tiny boat. All right, back to this pass. You do not have to schedule a time. So you, it gives you a QR code. So you're walking by, you see like Indiana Jones, like, let's do that right now. You go in, boop, boop, and you just use your code. Then you get back in the app and it shows you every attraction that you still have left available. You do each attraction one time using that pass. It, Amanda and I and Miles, we did it one day. We loved it. We, we splurged, we thought we'd try it. It was awesome. Every attraction, uh, Buzz Lightyear, Astro Blasters, here they call it Laser Blasters, Star Tours, um, the Hyperspace Mountain. And the only attraction, the only big attraction that they don't have included right now is Pirates of the Caribbean. But they're currently working on that and I think by September of this year, Pirates of the Caribbean will also be included in that uh, pass. Pirates of the Caribbean is a super fast loader anyways, but I mean it is, and it makes it, you, you'll hit 
by doing that, you'll hit every attraction, major attraction, probably a little over in a half a day. And the rest of the day, you just go shopping or ride some other attractions that aren't on that list, like maybe like Pinocchio, or if that's what you want to do. So uh, they, when they first started this program, they only had 250 available a day. They sold out like that. Then they upped it to 500 available a day. They sold out like that. And now I've heard it's a, it's a little over a thousand of them are available a day. Once they're sold out, they are sold out. So if you're thinking of doing that, it's on the app. On the app, you uh, you could buy it actually in advance. You buy it and say, I'm gonna be here on this day and you'll be able to buy it or buy it the day of and you get it if it's something uh, that you think about, you wanna do. And I would recommend it. Uh, at least do it one day because it'll blow your mind how much stuff you get done in one day. <sighs> Crazy. Okay. Now let's talk about food and restaurants here at Disneyland Paris. Disneyland Paris has some very nice restaurants. Here's the problem though, is that they book up very fast. So if you're planning a trip, uh, you might, when you go on the app, you can make a reservation. A lot of times it's like 60 days out, they're all booked up. So you might not be able to get those super nice restaurants. Periodically, they'll keep checking back. There's been, we've done that before where it's been all booked up. But I'll log on every day and just kind of check. And also it's like, oh, there's an availability and we'll just snatch it up and grab it. So you can try to do that as well. But they also have a ton of other restaurants that are super nice that um, that aren't like sit-down restaurants or the smaller sit-down restaurants that don't require reservations. Uh, lots of different food offerings here. One thing that's different is their breakfasts are a little bit different here. Um, just in the park, it's a lot of pastries, uh, a lot of pastries and a lot of coffee here uh, uh, compared to like in, in America maybe. Now, the very first time I was coming to Disneyland Paris, a lot of people in America who had never been to Disneyland Paris told me this, like, oh, you don't want to go to Disneyland Paris. It's dirty, the cast members are rude and mean. Um, that's not true. It's not been my experience at all, at all. Uh, I think that that stems from when Disneyland Paris first opened up as Euro Disney. I think they were understaffed, and so I think people were like, hey, this park's not as clean as it as the other Disney parks. And Disneyland Paris has worked very hard to overcome that uh, stigma. The cast members are very kind. I think I think they're fantastic. Uh, the park, I feel like, is very clean, and they're, and they're very helpful. I have not had a bad experience here at Disneyland Paris, like, not at all. And I think it's kind of interesting that the people who are always telling me, oh, you shouldn't do that, are the people who have never been here. Because if you get somebody who's been here, they're always like, I love it. Now, Disneyland Paris is not all roses and cotton candy. There is something to be aware of, and you're going to see this here at, and you won't see it at any really other park, just to be kind of aware of that. Smoking is more prevalent here in this park than I've seen at any other Disney theme park. Um, and that's just because of Europeans, a lot of them smoke here. And so there is, there's smoking areas here in the park. It's not a smoke-free park. Periodically, you'll even get guests who don't even wait to go to their smoking area. They'll just start smoking. Uh, the second they do, a lot of cast members will run over like, no, no, smoking, wait, you have the other area. But there is, it is more prevalent here. I just want you to be aware of that. You will see it. Um, you don't see it. I didn't, you don't see it like in America. You don't see it like in Tokyo. Or I didn't see it in Hong Kong. But here in Paris, it's just a culture here in Europe. Uh, smoking still in fashion. And, uh, and so a lot of people do that. So it's something that you could be aware of. That's really the only downside, I think, to the park. I don't mind. If people want to smoke, I have no problem with that. What I don't like is when they smoke around children. I don't like that. So... Uh, but I think, you know, it's not, it's not so bad. It's not the point where I'm like, I wouldn't do this. That would be, uh-oh. Oh, Jafar. He comes close and he's Jafar away. <laughs> there he goes. All right, you want to make the most of your time when you come here to Europe. So one of the things that you're going to battle with just going to happen is jet lag. Coming from America, you're going to come here, your sleep schedule you're about eight hours behind. So when it's the middle of the day here, we're usually in bed. So when you first fly here and land in Europe, uh, you're gonna probably land in the morning. You'll probably fly out like in the afternoon, you'll fly all night, you'll land maybe in the morning or afternoon. And when you do, you're gonna be tired and you're gonna be tempted to immediately go take a nap. Do not take a nap. What you wanna do is you wanna stay awake. Stay awake till as late as you can, till like seven or eight o'clock that night, and then you're gonna fall asleep. You'll fall asleep, you're gonna wake up about one in the morning, because you're just used to it. And then you wake up in the morning, uh, one minute or so morning, just kind of relax and go back to sleep. And you will sleep hard. If you do that the first day, you will overcome your jet lag, jet lag fairly easy. The worst thing you do is when you travel to a country, is you land 
and then you end up taking naps because then it keeps you on your sleep cycle and you want to break that sleep cycle. So when you first land here, go ahead and just try to trudge through. The first time I came here, uh, uh, was it like last year I came here to Disneyland in Paris, Amanda gave me this thing called melatonin. You guys know what melatonin is? I did not. Melatonin, it was like a, um, a chewable, you chew it, and it helps your body relax so you fall asleep. It's for sleeping. I never even heard of melatonin. So I landed here at Disneyland Paris, I landed at seven in the morning, which is <laughs> like 11 o'clock my time. And I thought melatonin gave you pep and like pet you up. So she's like, this is for Disneyland Paris for, for sleeping. So I landed at Disneyland Paris at seven in the morning, came right over here and I got to Disneyland Paris about nine in the morning. And I, I was like, okay, I'll, be, I'll take this, better take this melatonin to help me stay awake. That day, I was like, I was dragging. It was so hard, I just wanted to sleep, but I, I did, I roughed it out, I stayed awake. I learned my lesson, Oof. All right, now what about traveling from the airport to, from Disneyland, to the airport to Disneyland Paris? Really simple to do, you can do taxis. Um, I use a website called Klook, K-L-O-O-K. I can use Klook, and if you go under excursions, you can put down there uh, like airport transfers. And you can say, you're, they'll pick you up the airport and drop you off at uh, the, whichever hotel you're staying at. And you pay for it in advance and then the driver will greet you right there at the airport. Like they'll greet you and you get on, just get right there to go. <laughs> so here in uh, Europe, it's a little more expensive than doing an Uber or a taxi. In Asia, it was like 10 times cheaper than using an Uber or taxi. I don't know why. So, uh, but we, we ended up paying for it because it's so convenient just we'll walk out of the airport and have your driver greet you. They walk you right to the car, they help you with your luggage, and they take you right to the airport. Super easy to do. If you want, you can also take a train. There's train stations here that bring you right here to Disneyland Paris, but I would just recommend if you're coming straight to the airport to use like a, like a driver. All right, we need to talk about money. How do you spend your money? How do you do this? You have to do, um, uh, you need to do exchange. Really, you don't. Uh, the first time, first couple times I came, I'd bring American money and then I would exchange it and have lots of French currency. I no longer do that. The only thing you need um, actual paper money for is if you want to do like the shooting gun exposition and that's really about it. Everything else, they take credit cards. They take American Express here, they take Visa, they take MasterCard and uh, you just pay for that. And it'll pay in euros and then it will translate it exchange rate into uh, uh, US dollars. Now you'll want to look at your credit card before you come out. Uh, when I travel, I use American Express because they don't use, they charge zero fees. So uh, like it'll be like $35, 35 euros. I'll buy that and then I'll get the transaction on my phone and it was like $37 US dollars because it's a translation. Sometimes some credit cards, you want to find out your credit card, some visas, they'll do a transaction fee to do that. So find out before you travel if your, if your credit card has that, because if it does, you don't want to use that credit card. You want to get a different credit card with no transaction fees. Just met the cutest couple from Germany, and they told me, you guys, they're like, you have to come to Fantasia, I don't know how to pronounce it, Fantasia land or whatever it is. They're like, you have to do that. Here is, speaking of that, so this is what I'm thinking of doing. I was actually talking to some uh, uh, friends here in France, I am thinking about coming back to Europe and going to all the different theme parks here in Europe. I'm thinking about going to like all the parks in uh, Belgium, uh, France, Germany, England even, uh, the Netherlands. To see all these amazing theme parks and kind of experience that. And I want to show everything I can. I can. That way, uh, my friends in America can see how these amazing theme parks that you have. Because I would like to share those theme parks with our my American friends. I've been to Disneyland Paris five times. I've never once had a bad experience here. It's, I love it. I feel very comfortable. I feel very safe. And it's, it's very easy to navigate. It's like literally like no problems getting around uh, and everything is in English. So it's, it's so easy to do. Like when I was in Tokyo, sometimes I give like a menu and you just, you just have points. Like you look at the dish and just point to it. Here, the menus are all in French and English. So super easy to uh, navigate. I just got off the phone with speaking with Amanda. Uh, her and Miles are, were at the Sequoia Lodge where we're sitting at and they went swimming uh, this morning and is enjoying it. They are on their way over here and we're gonna go get a croque monsieur, our favorite sandwich here. But before we do that, I thought I'd just kind of show you some different little areas here within Disneyland Paris. 
Oh, the other thing is, people are asked like, well, how, what about like cell phone service and how's that work? Well, Disneyland, all the Disneyland you go to, they have free Wi-Fi. So, uh, and I don't, I use an Apple phone. So Apple is log on, they can use like FaceTime, for audio phone calls, whatever, no problem at all. Some carriers like T-Mobile, they have it free, others don't. So you have to find your certain character, your carriers to find out if they allow you to use your cell phone here. If not, they have free Wi-Fi uh, in all the parks and the hotels. Like you can connect at the hotel and then connect in Disney Village, which is downtown Disney, and then that takes you into Disneyland. Like you'll always have connect, you always have Wi-Fi. Okay, I just want to show you a few things here. If you ever do come to Disneyland Paris, it's kind of good to see. This here at the end of Main Street is called Victoria's Homestyle Restaurant. Has some of the best sweets you'll ever have. Look at these milkshakes. Look at these milkshakes. Oh my gosh, strawberry, chocolate, Nutella milkshakes. They've got this um, uh, mint and lime tea, green tea, and they also have a bunch of sweet treats. I highly recommend it. And they also hear, very prevalent, is they serve alcohol here at a lot of the restaurants. This is like a typical menu, right? So you see right here, celebration, Mickey menu, takeaway always from 12 p.m. And then it says it in, in uh, French, and then down below is in English. French and English, French and English, French and English. So easy. There you go, but French, English. French English. All right, we're gonna walk here. So that is a castle that takes you into Fantasyland. But right here, this takes you into Discoveryland. Think of it as Tomorrowland. Every Disney park around the world, when you come down the end of Main Street and you turn right, it's going to be Tomorrowland or Discoveryland. Every park: Tokyo, Hong Kong, uh, America, Paris. You walk down the Main Street and you turn to the right. You're always going to see. Uh, Tomorrowland. Here they call it Discoveryland, but it's Tomorrowland. Also, behind every castle at every Disney park is Fantasyland. Behind every castle is Fantasyland. Where things get a little different and maybe weird about the Disney parks is when you go left. Now you notice here we've got Frontierland and then Adventureland. At Disneyland, it's the exact opposite. You've got uh, Adventureland and Frontierland. Um, in like Magic Kingdom, you've got Frontierland and like uh, Liberty Square. Uh, sometimes they're a little bit different. Sometimes they don't have Frontierland or whatever. That's the only time it's a little bit different. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to walk outside Disneyland Park uh, to meet Amanda and Miles. We want to come back in and go croak my shirt. But I want to show you how close the Walt Disney Studios Park, the other park here at uh, Disneyland Paris is, because it is so close. Why do people like Disney so much? I think it's an escape. I think it's a place that we can come, we can feel appreciated, we can feel loved. It's so a special. We can come in here at Judgment Free Zone and just enjoy what we like to see. We can be entertained. We can ride some rides. Just have a good time. And it does make us feel good. And it, that translates across every language. It doesn't matter where you are. Hong Kong, Paris, California. It all feels the same. I felt like I was getting a little too much sun, so I got my uh, little umbrella out. Something we learned about in, uh, in Japan and Hong Kong, people are like, wear, use umbrella all the time. It's not just for rains, for sun. Okay, I just exited out of Disneyland, Paris. We're just walking right out. They're renovating this hotel right now, so it's closed. Let me show you how close that this other park is. All right, so we're just exiting out right there. It's the entrance to Disneyland Park. We're gonna turn this way, just kind of walk right around the corner. We're just walking around outside again. I mean, it's just literally right there. And you can see a giant balloon. That is a Disney Village in downtown Disney. And then we're turning right, right over there. And there is, right behind that tree is uh, Walt Disney Studios. Okay, so there's, that's the entrance into Disney Village and downtown Disney. And right there, that's Walt Disney Studios. You see it right there? And right there is Disneyland. It is just that close. And you go back and forth to these parks as much as you want. Now, here's the thing. What is the smallest Disney park in the world? Technically, I guess you have to say it is uh, Hong Kong with 68 acres. But I think Walt Disney Studios is the smallest park in the world. It has more acres, true, but it has less used acres. So even though it has more acres, there's less used land. I think if you use all the land for attractions, it's around 44 to 48 acres. So it really is smaller. So does that count? I don't know. All right, I walked outside to show you, and look who I picked up, Miles and Amanda. Woo we're going to go back in the park, and we're going to get Croque Monsieur to finish this. Now, there is one other thing I didn't talk about. 
if you book a, a Disneyland hotel, a property hotel to stay, that's like the Sequoia Lodge, the Davy Crockett, the uh, Santa Fe, any of those on property hotels, they give you a magic hour, one hour early into the park every day that you're here. You get to go into the park one hour early, which is awesome because during that time, you get to hit a ton of attractions. So if you don't want to buy that Premier Access, use that first hour, get here, bam, 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 bam. Hit like Star Tours, I mean, uh, uh, Hyper Six Mountain, Phantom Manor, Big Thunder Mountain. You really hit all the big ones with that first hour. And it's not very crowded. I mean, it's not very crowded at all. Has this ever happened to you? Have you ever done this? Or has your spouse ever done this to you? Giving you a heart attack? All of a sudden, man, it's like, she's like, I, I, I've lost my phone, my phone, it's gone, it's gone, it's gone. And I'm like, what? She's like, I lost my wallet, I can't find it. And then she's like, oh, it's in the backpack. I was like, what just happened? She's like, yeah, it's in your backpack. You're fine. Hey, you actually did lose your wallet in Hong Kong. I did lose my wallet in Hong Kong. That was terrible. That was for real. That was for real. I, for those of you who haven't seen that video, in Hong Kong, I lost my wallet. I had everything in it. But uh, luckily, they turned it into City Hall and we found it. For the person who ever did that, I'm forever indebted. We want to end this video with our one of our very favorites. Coming in the Market House Delicatessen here on Main Street. There's a castle right back there. This, I have to recommend this sandwich. It's the Croque Monsieur. It is the best. All right, you're gonna come right here. They have ham and turkey. The ham is the best. Better get two. That's all you need. Are you recording? Oh yeah. Okay. So this is the cooked mixture. I've already eaten most of it. I can't help it. It has melted cheese on top of it, two pieces of bread inside, more melted cheese, like a cheese sauce, and then ham. It is so good. It is my favorite. You know when you're laying in bed late at night and all of a sudden your wife rolls over, she looks at you and she's like, what are you thinking about? Generally, most of the time, I'm either thinking about this sandwich or the meatball sub at, uh, at Hollywood Studios. This is my favorite. It's so good. I think about this sandwich all the time. Look at that. When you come to when you come to Disneyland Paris, this is a must do. You have to get this sandwich. Ah, uh, Disneyland Paris, so good. Anyways, thank you so much for watching today's video. Tomorrow's video is gonna be very special. We are gonna be going to uh, an amazing old theater here in Paris. Our friend Ludovic is gonna take us there. He works there, and he assures us that they have the best popcorn in all of Paris. France, the world. I want to show you what it's like to travel around Paris. We're going to do Subway, and that'll be tomorrow's video, guys. So thank you so much for watching. We'll see you guys tomorrow when we take a Subway and go to Old Theater here in Paris. Ha -ha! Hit the subscribe button. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Disneyland Paris, we are going to miss you. We love you very much. And Miles said that this is his favorite park because it says he said it has his favorite rides. Hyperspace Mountain, Big Thunder, and Crush's Coaster. So, there's that. Disneyland Paris is amazing. You're gonna have a good time, that's for sure. You will love it, I love it, and make sure you eat a croque monsieur.